and ladies love a sexy vampire, right? And these are definitely not gonna work. I can't talk, I'm drooling all over myself. I definitely need an upgrade. Maybe the visual effects fiends at Zoic can help me out. They're the ones who made the HBO vampire series True Blood seem as realistic as a nature documentary. Zoic Studios is an Emmy award-winning effects house that brings blazing big budget feature effects to the small screen. We do visual effects for TV shows, movies, commercials, uh, video game cinematics. Andrew Orloff has overseen all kinds of rad visual effects from projects as varied as Halo 3, CSI, Battlestar Galactica, and True Blood. True Blood is a really cool, unique show on yeah. HBO about vampires coexisting with humans in kind of the southern Bible Belt of America. She smells fresh. When I think of this show, you know, I mean, it's not an effects-heavy show. I think of, you know, the drama, but it has supernatural characters in it. You want to feel that it's a, that it's a completely, you know, just day-to-day, organic amalgamation of these supernatural powers with the real world. Zoic digitally augments the practical makeup and effects shot on set to create shape-shifting characters, hyper-surreal dream sequences, and of course, what ah, 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 the fangs. We do a lot of fang replacement, ashing or dusting, like what happens when a vampire gets killed or exposed to the sun. Am I gonna see some vampires get staked? You absolutely will. Zoic's guru of gore is a guy named Steve Meyer. Okay, his real title is Facility 2D Supervisor. So is a 2D effect compositing, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, it's the process of taking all the elements that are generated by CG or practical plate photography and putting them all into one software and finishing the shot. I supervise all the compositors. We get a lot of young talent. I kind of mentor them and watch them and give them tips and tricks on how to really sell a shot. You're the compositing sensei. Here I am. <laughs> There's more than one way for a vamp to bite it in the True Blood world, and Steve's team wheeled it the proverbial stake for the series' first major bloodletting. This is the first time we see a vampire actually get staked in the episode. So he, the, what Leon, Alan likes to do is the first time you see anything, you spend some time on it. His directive was, uh, just make it as gory and bloody as, as you can make it. Lunch time. Lunch time. <laughs> what I noticed in there was that was the face of Long Shadow, the vampire, as he was kind of starting to melt. The, leading up to the shot, we, there, it's all practical. That means the first stage of Long Shadow's disintegration was actual makeup. And we warp that shot a little bit, we, where we literally go in and with a kind of a warped paintbrush and start to stretch his skin a little bit. And then we take their plate photography of him shaking and we actually make him melt. How many different uh, layers or elements are uh, in that shot? Can, can you show me some of them? Yeah, I can show you a few of them. No wonder Steve looked wary. Turns out there are at least 50, 5 oh, different CG passes for this shot. Zoic made a CG prosthetic model of actor Raul Trujillo's face from the green screen shot. It can be twisted, pulled, and melted however they please. Those subtle muscle uh, variations that are happening when he's like, you know, shaking his face around, we want to get that into the model because that's what really sells it. Sound simple? Uh, not so fast. Like I said, there are 50 passes to this thing. Most of it is just like lighting. As you can see, we're kind of pulling his face and stretching it. Right. But it's very flat and, you know, not, not that exciting. So we, we, take, we take all these various lighting passes, and lighting is key. You know, it's like we get different passes for the raw lights and the diffuse lights and the ambient lights, and we also have highlights and spec lights. In order to get the digital lighting to match the lighting on set, Zoic's 3D modelers use HDRI, High Dynamic Range Imaging Technology. That allows the digital world to get a super tricked out look at lighting range by sandwiching a bunch of different exposures together. And then there's this trippy thing. This, this pass here is a motion vector pass. And as he's spinning around, um, there's motion blur. If you go frame by frame, there might be a piece of flesh that's whipping around. 
the whole image doesn't get the same amount of motion blur. So if he's, you know, spinning like this, the piece that's flailing will have more blur. Wow. So in other words, like if you see someone, uh, just <clears throat> someone moving on camera, and then you slow it down frame by frame, you're going to see motion blur. Yes. This is the yeah. vector that you add yeah. to to make sure that the physical thing you've created digitally now has that motion yep. blur, so it sells it to the yeah. human eye, right? Yep. <laughs> There's even a depth pass when they create a digital depth of field that seamlessly matches what was shot. Where it's brighter here. Oh, wow. It's in focus, and then we can, where it gets darker and darker, that takes a little bit softer look. Okay, so they've got more tricks than a Vegas headliner. But how did movie makers create effects like this back in the pre-digital days? Most of it would have been more special effects and makeup. We're in creative editing. We kind of cut around and it's a prosthetic dummy or something. Like Raiders of the Last Lost Ark, yeah, where it's the guy's just wax just melting. melting. And that's still done today. You know, they still still do looks that, really but, cool. But if you want to get like a real person acting and not just a you know a wax form, right? Or, then you need to go to a CG. To approach. have that performance yeah, behind yeah. it. Yeah. A masterful makeup effects artist can transform an actor from head to toe. But Steve's team can take the effects a step further, enhancing every element around the actor, too. In the hair-raising season one climax, they did just that with True Blood's leading lady killer, Vampire Bill. The main character, Bill, uh, who is a vampire, Bill is going vampire. out to rescue his mortal girlfriend, Suki, and he has to go out there into the sunlight and try and save her. And they and don't go to get yeah, vampires Yeah, vampires and sunlight. sunlight don't mesh very okay. well. And this is what happens when vampires go into sunlight. Sucky! <laughs> Actor Stephen Moyer got the first round of Crisco treatment with makeup, but to get the vamp's POV, Zoic amped up the contrast, added a heat shimmer effect, and those shafts of life, they call them god rays, to make the sunlight feel more piercing. It looks as if you guys added some smoke as well. Some of the smoke is already shot, practically. You know, they have a smoke tube coming out of uh, the back, and it comes up around his neck, but it doesn't get enough, so we have to enhance it. To sell the idea that he's getting more charred by the moment, Zoic also added wisps on his face. And killed Bill's baby blues. I would think that you'd have to really think about the way human skin would, would burn. We do look at reference photos of how overcooked meat would look. That's some yeah. gruesome research. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the chicks would be digging the vampires if they all end up crispy like no, that, leather, right? Leathery skin doesn't go well. I still have a chance. <laughs> Very cool effect. If I ever need to take out a vampire, I know who to come there to. There you go. Coming up, I grow a pair of fangs. Ladies, watch out. Get more Science of the Movies online at sciencechannel.com slash science of the movies.